Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Firstly, I just want to say thank you to everyone who subscribed, smashed that thumbs up button, uh, commented, just anyone who supported me. Um, we finally reached uh, 1,000 subscribers, so it may not sound like much, but it's a it's a big milestone, and I'm just really um, appreciative of everyone who has supported me along the way. And I wanted to give a, one big shout out to Childish, Childish Plays on YouTube. Um, if you haven't seen him, you can go in and find his video in the events tab here. Um, from when he basically came into the game, I started chatting to him, and he's a very community-driven um, YouTuber, and he's helped me so much just with um, video ideas, how to do setups on YouTube, all that sort of thing. So big shout out to you, Childish. Uh, thanks for all your help, mate. And now the main part of this video, what we're going to be looking at is experience um, and farming. So the type of monsters you want to use for farming and the sort of places you can get the fastest and most efficient experience in your gameplay. So the first thing we're going to look at is those um, the farming creatures. So at the start of the game, um, we all get given the same two-star unit, the Wind Stone Guard, and very early on, he will be your first farming unit. Um, early game, when you're still getting vitality glyphs from the floating islands and stuff like that, um, your farmer wants to be something that's that can be tanky but still survive and do damage at the same time. So this guy fits the bill because he has um, his third skill is this AOE um, that does damage based on his defense and also gives himself a regenerate heal. So he's got sustain, he does damage that's based off defense, also his second attack does damage based off defense as well. And then um, yeah, so you can build him tanky. Um, so he survives, also has the heal, and also deals damage based on those tanky stats. So that's what you want early game. So the other option early game, if you manage to pull him for a two-star option, is the Ice Knight, which is the Waterstone Guard. Um, he's fantastic. He doesn't have the self-sustain, but he does have this passive shield, which every time he does an attack, he gives himself a shield of 10% of his max HP. And on top of that, he has a chance to counterattack, a 50% chance to counterattack to gain that shield. So um, he doesn't have the sustain, but early on in Floating Islands and the, the first few stages, um, nothing's going to be breaking that shield. So he doesn't need self-sustain to do it. And the other big thing about him is his second skill is an AOE based on, H based on his max HP. And at the moment in the game, HP scaling is really big. Like... This will do a lot of damage compared to even the defense scaling of the Windstone Guard. So that's very handy. But what, like I said, once you start trying to get further into the scenarios, you will eventually need Lifesteal Glyphs. Um, and Lifesteal are dropped from the Wrath Dungeon. So once you get past that phase of just getting your team sort of built and then moving into the Wrath Dungeon, um, you can chuck life steal on something like the Ice Knight, and then once you get better life steal glyphs, start getting some purples and stuff like that, um, you can transition into using attackers for your farming units. Attackers are just a bit faster normally, depending on obviously um, specific mechanics of each individual monster. But like this Fire Dragon, so something you really is really handy for a farming attacker is having an AOE attack. Um, with the AOE, they just do spread damage to all enemies, meaning they get more healing back from the life steal as well. Um, besides AOE attackers, you can also go for attackers with some like cheesy sort of mechanics, kind of like this uh, Fire Succubus. So she's got the passive that um, if she kills an enemy, she recovers the turn. And if she doesn't kill the enemy, she gains attack and speed buff. So normally she's going to uh, just one-shot monsters. If she doesn't, well, she gets the speed buff and attack buff to make sure she does the next turn. And then she gains the extra turn. So stuff like that's fantastic. So when you're glyphing these attackers, um, you, sort of, you still want a bit of speed on them. Um, and then your main stats are going to be attack, crit rate, and crit damage. Um, but don't forget, when they're your farming unit, they also need to survive. So putting a tanky glyph, HP or defense on them is also helpful sometimes, dropping an attack for HP or defense. And in this situation, I'd normally recommend defense over HP, um, just because um, raising your defense also reduces the damage you take, um, but leaves your HP pool low, which means when you get that life steal, it's healing a higher percentage of your HP. That's just how I do it anyway. But yeah, that pretty much covers the monsters. So you want 
tanky monsters early on with self recovery and then later on you can go on to the lifesteal sort of um, attackers for um, for damage and th there are more um, more of those tanky ones that you might summon early game just another example is this um, earth minotaur he's got uh, AOE for his third skill based on his HP um, and it also armor breaks and gives him a regeneration so the regeneration heals him and the armor break means he can kill enemies quicker and his first skill also um, does damage based on his max HP so he's another one that I played around with early and he was actually pretty solid at it so there are other ones you can pull but that's just what the kind of thing you're looking for it does damage basically you're looking for tanks that have a regenerate type skill um, the next thing we'll go into is um, best places to get experience so the most common place you'll be gaining experience is in the floating islands and there's no magic trick to it um, in the floating islands it's just basically um, sorry in the in the shattered islands you start at the floating islands work your way um, right through past Colossus Desert fire maze um, they'll probably be the last ones you can farm with a single monster but the further you get basically the more experience you get from it um, and something I just wanted to, to demonstrate quickly I'll, I'll do it with a, a quick run with my dragon um, is that the experience you get from the stage is a set amount so even the max level monster that you are uh, you're using will be ta absorbing some of that experience so in this example with this battle here um, even though I've got three fodder units that I'm aiming to get leveled the dragon is still going to steal some experience off of them so basically what you want to do is have um, you never want to have more than one max level monster to farm ideally um, and another idea you can use is if you're leveling up a monster that can be a farmer you can do some achievements because there are achievements in all these zones to do it with uh, one monster two monsters or three monsters so when you're leveling up a monster that can be a farming unit and can do these levels by themselves that's a great time to complete those achievements by using them by themselves or with one or two other monsters um, I just like to be able to do stuff um, multiple multiple things at once just multitasking so if you look there um, the all this um, all my fodder units got uh, 1252 uh, experience so I'll do one more run just to show it where what I'll do is I'll replay it but I'll drop two of those units off and so if I drop two off and then we start so basically that 1252 because the dragon was supposed to be getting um, 1252 as well we basically just multiply that by four and that gives us our total of the experience so in that case it would have given us um, 4,000 I'm not even going to try and do the maths but we'll add it up at the end here when you see this one um, basically what you'll see is the the deer will end up ha gaining um, 2,504 experience I'm pretty sure if my maths is correct which is double what the others got which means the dragon is also absorbing that much experience as well so it's wasted experience um, so there you go 2505 okay it rounded up one but um, yeah so you don't want to do just two or three monsters with your farming unit um, basically if you ever have a max level farming unit uh, you just want to always run it with three other monsters is the basic gist of that the um, the other thing I was going to mention is while you're farming, like I said, it's the furthest you can do gives the most experience. But another thing on that multitasking is also look at the other other achievements while you're going through doing it. There is um, all the achievements on every uh, stage where if you kill X amount of cre of a certain creature, you gain um, you you complete achievements and get items. So like I can farm comfortably with my dragon Colossus Desert very fast but I had been going through the volcano doing these killing uh, manticores and scorpicores um, and griffins in the volcano just because why not I'm, I know I'm losing a bit of experience but I'm also gaining pretty good rewards that you never know I might end up getting a, um, a four star out of those summons so 
I just like to complete multiple things at once. The next one I want to look at is the experience dungeon, which isn't on at the moment, but sometimes during events they'll have a, a new little island that opens up uh, to the right of Tower of Trials in that open water area. And it'll be a 10 level dungeon. And obviously the higher you go, the more experience you get. And that's all it really gives you is high amounts of experience and a few crystals, but nothing else. So it depends where you are in the game, whether that one is um, is uh, beneficial to you. Like for me, I was lucky enough to pull this Wind Death Knight and he's an amazing solo unit. Um, so he can solo level 10 in that dungeon, giving me massive amounts of XP. So when that event's on, I'll farm it all day. Um, but... Uh, your normal farmers like my dragon or your attacking farming units you need they're not going to be able to do that dungeon at level 10 so it's a matter of weighing it out when that dungeon comes out of the highest level you can do and another thing to keep in mind in that dungeon is that you might be able to put a full team together that can clear further into it and you might find that if you can only uh, clear with one farming unit uh, level four of it you might be able to get to level eight seven or eight and then repeat those with your single farming unit and even if they die on the middle stage like the third wave of it you might get more experience than you were from completing that level four so it's just a bit of a play around when the dungeon comes out you'll see when it comes and um, just experiment with it and see what the best value for experience you can get um, the next one i want to talk about is uh, potions now potions is something you get through general play um, doing achievements daily missions all that sort of thing and um, you can check how much experience each potion gives you here. I don't really pay attention to it. All I know is they're there. I use them uh, mainly for if I pull a new unit that I really want to rank up quickly, I'll just use it to punch out their levels to max them out so that I can then um, rank them up if I've got fodder sitting there waiting to feed to them. Um, the, um, the great thing about uh, potions too is you can get them from using instant tickets. And I really like the instant ticket system because um, if you're like me I can't play the game when I'm at work so when I go on my lunch break I just log in the game for a couple minutes uh, spend all my instant tickets on um, in the floating islands and then just take all the rewards take the potions and it's just a good little system so that you don't energy cap and sit there wasting energy um, but yeah then you just basically go in give your monster the potion and then they gain experience the next method I wanted to talk about, which is probably the most late game um, method of gaining experience, and that is gaining experience while you're glyph farming. So that requires you to have a one, two, three, four man glyph dungeon team that you can take an extra unit with you. So for me, like I said earlier, I'm very lucky that I managed to pull the, um, the wind death knight because he can actually solo wrath 10 for me and he can do it in about five or so minutes so it's not a slow farm and i can take four units along with him i do need really good glyphs to do this but it's a fantastic way for me to do glyph farming which i was going to do anyway but also gain the experience um basically free experience while i'm doing it another team that i used to use was um the water tree the earth fell core and originally it was the um the wind unicorn but that can also be subbed out for the water holy sister and um that's a three unit team that's not not easy to get but obtainable you don't require the the, the four star units um and you do need good glyphs but it can do it in fairly fast times around four to five minutes and you're still getting two monsters worth of experience for it so um that's just another way that i like some people just want to do fast runs and I get that. Sometimes I just want to do fast runs so I put in my full teams. But if I don't care about run times, then I'll just throw in something like this and um, level up the experience while I do it and kill two birds with one stone. So that's pretty much it for, um, for gaining experience and the type of monsters you need to use. So I hope this helps you guys out. Once again, thank you to everyone who um, subscribed and helped and supported me along the way. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'll look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Cheers.